something everyone is looking for, how to get more listings right now. On the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 157. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com, or you can always catch us on YouTube. So go to our YouTube channel, Wandering or uh, WBNL Coaching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Jen O'Brien, listings, huh? Well, how, how can you get listings? You got to get listings. You know, you always need to list to last, but this is the thing everybody wants to know. How do I go get more listings when we have no inventory and people don't seem to want to sell their house? Well, I think that's about to change. Yeah. I'm going to cover five ways I believe that you can get listing appointments right now. Five different ways for sure. You don't have to do them all, but I bet you'll want to do one or two of them. So what's on your uh, game plan for the weekend, Jan O'Brien? You do. I, I saw your note from the universe this morning was telling you. Ah, that you yes. Out. I shared something with you that was very apropos for wandering but not lost because you was. Really believe in getting up and getting out, and it was just a note. I love these notes from the universe. If you've ever uh, go check it out, Mike Dooley, tut.com. You can sign up for this very motivational daily email that comes to you that just has this great note. Usually they're just spot on, and today it was about the sun. The morning sunshine, you know, the breeze, everything's calling you. The trees, which of course I love, are calling you. You know, like get up and get out. It's basically what it said to me. So I am going to find a way. We, we, the weather was very windy yesterday here. We, we have, it was warm and it's going to only be in the 70s. So we have a bit of a weird weather coming through from the, the you know, middle of the country eastward. Yeah. So we had a little bit of cloudy skies yesterday. And I think it's going to be nice enough to go out and, and do some wandering. What about you? Uh, we are going to have a uh, another binge weekend of television, uh, well, movies this week. We're going to be hitting Oscar movies this week. So that's going to be our thing. We always do a little wandering, so there's some walks in there. But uh, So what's on the list? Because I have been watching, a, I got to share one. Let's do one shout out. Go watch, it's, it's nominated, I don't know what category, My Octopus Teacher. Oh my oh, God. Oh, Laura. Yes. Oh my God. That is unbelievably yeah. so great. I can't even take it. Nomadland, definitely. I watched Mank uh, like that also. Uh, I liked um, the, what's the one that you told me you had already seen? Oh, I did. Oh, Chicago it. 7. Yes, it was great. I had yeah, it was watched it now forever and I watched it and I really enjoyed that. What else is on the list that you're gonna? Guide well, we're gonna. Well, I think all of them except one, I believe, is accessible on some well, some streaming service. So they we're are. gonna hit. We're gonna try to hit them all before the Oscars. But certainly, uh, we'll probably just do a couple this weekend. Uh, so, I, I want to go back and watch Wandavision again. Yeah. It's, oh, it's so good. The so so interesting comparing the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, to the DC stuff because if you see Justice League is out on HBO Max. Uh, no, I, I can't. I've never made it through that movie. I have to tell you, I think it's night and day. I started watching it, mm -hmm. and it is just there's not a, a cool storyline. The, the Marvel stuff is just so better developed. You know what? It's the, even though they have you, you, you know those characters in the DC uh, uh, comics that you don't. It's like I these Marvel characters are my friends for crying yeah, out loud. I know there's a huge difference between the way they're developing. I mean, it was yeah. I watched part of it. It's like a four-hour director's cut. Yeah, not like maybe it was two meant to be two movies or something. I don't know. But bottom line, it's just like nonstop action. There's no inner. I mean, there's barely a storyline, and it's like there's none of the cool comedy and the development of the yeah. characters that you have in the other ones. Like and we're I waiting did. until uh, Falcon, or uh, yeah, Falcon and the Black, or, or Winter Soldier and the, and the Falcon go run all the way through because we like to watch them all at the same time. Like we waited for all of WandaVision to be done before we watched it because we wanted. Oh, to interesting. Watch. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, there you go. So, see, look, there's things to do even if you're going to be doing what we have learned to do during the pandemic is even do more <laughs> streaming and binge watching. <laughs> That's Which right. Is fun. Which is fun. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, 
Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, cool. Good deal. Now let's jump into what five ways to get more listings now or at least get some listing appointments or perhaps connect with people and put them into your database if they're not ready to, to go now, they, they may be later. But I really think these are these are five very pinpointed ways and, and I want to talk a little bit about, I just did the market report, so I want to talk a little bit about what's happening in our market right now where I really think these are timely. And I'm going to start with the most important one first, which is call your entire database okay this is not something new but i know so many people have not done this and don't underestimate why this is number one the easiest thing to do because you just do not know who in your database people that you know sphere influence past clients whoever might have had some milestones some different things happen in their life and they may have considered this is this is the theme right now there's a lot of people through this pandemic who have made life changing decisions about what they're going to do. They may have thought they're going to retire and stay in the home that they bought with you forever, you know, for for, till whenever. Uh, And now maybe they want to move back home. This is where we are seeing the homes coming on the market. But before we go a little further, let's talk about why people are not putting their homes on the market. Why has it been this way? And why do we do I think and then in following the experts and so forth, why it might start changing? Okay, so the big reason that people are in your market that don't want to put their house on the market is that they don't have another house to go to if they are staying in the market. And even if they're moving someplace else, because low inventory is a problem everywhere. So that's the biggest issue, right? My God, how many renters do you know now? I know so many renters who sold their houses this year that don't have any place to go. I mean, at least a half a dozen. It's crazy. Yeah. So we, there are, there's that happening there. The, the tenant eviction, it was extended to March 31st. I haven't, I've done, I've done some research. I haven't seen any other extension of that. I thought I heard something about June, but I don't, I think states are doing their own thing. So look, we're coming up on March 31st. Yeah. Well, why I think we may see more properties come on the market because all the investors out there that have been dealing with folks who are maybe getting behind in the payments or they couldn't evict them. They've been starting to evict them for other reasons. Those people may decide for a couple of reasons, this, and this is coming up in a minute. This is another one is investors, but those folks want to maybe buy high, okay, right now. So in fact, let's talk about that, right? So that's my next number two is non-owner occupied investor properties because of the tenant eviction, you know, maybe the moratorium lifting in March 31st. And many people think that we're not going to continue to go higher and higher and higher. Well, we will, as long as there's no inventory and the interest rates stay. So as soon as more inventory comes on the market, that's what I want to talk about for a second. What is going to come on the market? Well, I think investors are are either going to find another tenant or maybe they're sick of it and they want to buy while it's high and wait and see if the market comes down, which is what a lot of people are doing, not just investors. I know people who are selling their private home uh, because they, they're thinking the same thing. I'm glad I'm going to, I think it's going to change. I don't know how long it's going to keep going up another 5,000 or that because the, frankly, for months, the median sales prices in just about all markets are inching up, inching up, inching up. Yeah. Many, many people think as soon as things change a little bit the, and the, it's all about the recovery of the economy and the getting the virus under control. Yeah. So if you watch and follow anything the Fed is saying, uh, the, the interest rates are going to inch up as soon as there's more signs of the recovery. Now the stimulus is out. People are getting their checks. They're going to start spending money again. The virus is, you know, I think we still have some unknowns about the variant, but I saw, I think I saw this morning, 46, 47 million people have gotten vaccinated already. Yeah. Right. So we're getting there. So I just think that there are going to be people in your database back to number one, who may be thinking, you know what, maybe we just need to sell while it's high and we'll rent for a while until we see if the market comes down because there aren't any properties there. You just don't know. So that's why I say call your database, check in with them, see who in your database has an investment property, you know, who who might want to be selling now to get out. Now, you can't say, hey, the market's going to crash because you don't even know, but people are thinking about it. We know for sure the interest rates are going to tick up. 
we know the recovery is happening. The economy is going to get better as things open up. Some states are opening up more. All this is happening. I predict it's going to be more inventory in the second half of the year, but I think there's opportunities sure. right now if you do this. So number one, your database. Number two, investors. And you you just simply need to reach out. And how do you find the investors? You just get, you use your local data sources. You can do it in the tax records yourself. A lot of, a lot of uh, realtors have access to Remine, R-E-M-I-N-E, -E, as part of your association. If you're in a title or escrow state, you might be able to get them to give this to you. So you need a list of people who are non-absentee owners. And all that is, is that tax record is somebody whose mailing address is different than the address of the house. That's your list of people who potentially, you know, who they don't live there. So it's more than likely an investment property. Now you can send an email. I mean, not an email. You'll just have the phone. You'll have the addresses. But unless you go invest in some data sources where you can cross reference people and see if you can find their emails or their phone, but send a letter. OK. And just discuss about what's happening. Talk about things like maybe they want to do a 1031 exchange or maybe they want to take advantage of the hot market and sell now as soon as if they don't have a tenant or, you know, whatever the situation is. OK, so that's number two. Number three, this is not old. I mean, this is not new. This is we, this one's been around forever and people have been talking about it since the pandemic started is the I may have a buyer letter because you yep. do probably have buyers and you cannot find them houses. <laughs> So this is just simply, I'm current and be real. I'm currently representing a great family, a couple, a future homeowner. Describe, you know, their motivation. Who desperately want to buy in your neighborhood? They're looking for a home just like yours. I'm running because I just want to know: Have you thought about selling your home? If you are, please give me a call. I'll be happy to arrange a, a one-time showing and, uh, you know, manage the transaction for you. Something like that. Really simple, but you would target the homes that your buyers were looking for and then send those out. Now, the idea here is if you don't cross-reference and get phone numbers and emails, at least send a letter. And I recommend hand addressing it, right? I think it's more likely hand address it, put a real stamp on it, and maybe even try a postcard if you want to, but be, uh, that's a great idea. It's a great idea for your buyers that you're going to say, yeah. this is the no, kind I, of I just recommend that to my, my cousin lives up in Oregon and they're selling their property and their, their inventory is extremely low and they have some special needs they're looking for. But I'm like, you know what? You need to go find your house. Just go find your house. That's it. You know? I mean, it's crazy. I know people, I, I've heard of people that are potential buyers who are just knocking on people's doors saying, have you yep. thought about selling your house? Right. You know? So same idea. Yeah, because you know what? A seller doesn't know they're a seller sometimes until there's a buyer. So there's your key right there. It's a luck thing, okay? Which yep. moves me into number four. I'm going to talk about a niche or target marketing. And, I'll, and this is why I really feel you have to start with your database. So it's the same idea. I think other possible target markets are 55 plus or older communities. But really, it's anybody who's thinking of downsizing yep. or upsizing, meaning they're working from home. This pandemic has changed everything, right? In so many ways, there are so many more people who need different space in their homes. They need a different floor plan. They want the ability to have different zones in their house for working from home, for the kids to work, for whatever. There's a lot of people. There's a huge percentage of people who are going to be working remotely and a com or a combination of some days home, some days working, right? Some people, yep. some people may be okay with moving now because they uh, live where they live because of the drive and the commute. But if they're now going to be able to work remotely, they can maybe purchase something that's cheaper and bigger in the outskirts and the suburbs of wherever they're working. There's so many different reasons. And the point is you don't know where they are. So why not just pick a couple of these niches beyond your database? So, you're looking in your database for the same idea of the of this niche idea, which is I think you'd start with 55 plus communities because some of those folks may have decided that, you know what, I was going to live here in Arizona or, you know, Florida yeah. or uh, Nevada. That's where our team's at. Um, but you know what? This has made it realize I really be I want to be closer to my family. That's right? right. So a lot of that is happening or people that might want to be moving in a year from now that you could start staying in touch with. So they want a single story, maybe. Maybe there's people who've lived in their home 10 plus years and now they're getting into that age group that they bought because they had the bigger family. That's the classic downsizing thing, right? Your house is too big for you now. So many people, I mean, we're in that age group where it's like, my next house, absolutely not going to be a two story, right? Everyone who's older and per perceiving, you know, older than 55 and in the sea, they want their next house to be the one. 
they want a single story, right? So right. those are those are the areas to go look at. Same idea. You go to your data provider, Remind, title company, get the list of homes that meet that criteria and craft a letter, uh, you know, that just talks about the downsizing or upsizing or right sizing or have you thought of moving. And then if you and then if you can cross reference and get people to reach out to you or even put in, especially if you have a in your letters, I would put something in. Do you want to find out what the value of your home is now? You may be surprised to see what it is. I mean, listen, people know they go, they're looking they on do. Zillow. They're all going and looking and seeing what's their house worth, right? So recommend that they maybe come to your landing page on your website where they can get a free home valuation. That's another way for you to stay in touch with them and get their email. So I'd recommend that uh, for that. And the final idea here is uh, notice of defaults. So you may not want to work this, but I definitely feel in certain parts of the country, there uh, the numbers, here's the numbers, okay? As of last month, when I got the the people that were in, how many people that took the um, mortgage, uh, what do you call it, forbearance? The mortgage forbearance agreement, it was like two point something million a year ago when COVID-19 happened and states started shutting down and people started losing their jobs and or cut back and pay and so forth. It was over 2 million people applied for some kind of mortgage forbearance. Well, now it's down to the only people that are left is 15.8% of that. So like 525,000 homes, 525,000 mortgages around the country are either haven't worked out a plan with the bank, the more, whoever services their loan, or they have, or they're starting a, a short sale because they don't have the equity or deed in lieu, okay? But a, right. a percentage of those, 13% or so, don't have a workout plan. Those, not all of them, now there's no way, some of those people, here, here's what I think has been happening. The difference between why this is not like it was last time when we had the horrible crash in certain parts of the country, especially, where you know 75% of all the homes sold were distressed properties. Right now, nationally, it's 1%. In Nevada, it's, point, it's 0.9 or 0.8%, even less than that. It's under 1% of all the homes sold in February were distressed properties. It's like that around the country. Right. Is it going to tick up? Yes, because I was just saying 525,000 homes. There's always situations where people get behind in their in their mortgage anyway. But if we just take the whole mortgage uh, forbearance deal, there's real numbers that you can look at. And like, by the way, where did I get all those numbers? Because those great guys at Keeping Current Matters put all there this data go. together and I use it. Okay. And I, I just put it together in my video for Nevada. Uh, but out of that percentage, I think it's going to tick up. And then depending on what state you're in and what the, the unemployment rates are. So what I want to say is people have been possibly okay, this is real because this is what happened last time. Let's say somebody can't make their payments or they're really, you know, it's tight right now, but they know they, they're not going to be foreclosed on. Is it possible there's a percentage of that 525,000 homes that aren't making their house payment? even though they know they have equity, they're not selling their home where they could be, get clean it all up and move on because guess what? They can't afford to buy a house someplace That's right. or yeah. their credit has been messed up, even though they're not supposed to have all that. Or they might be, you know, it's, it's not supposed to be hurting their credit, but maybe they're, they are worried about finding another house or even finding a rental. Okay. So why not live in your house and not make the payments for a while and wait to the last minute. This is what I'm trying to say. There you go. What I think is happening now. Why? Because the CARES Act ends now. It came out a year ago. It allowed for a 12-month moratorium on the eviction process. I mean, on the uh, foreclosure process, also right. the evictions for the tenants. So perfect storm. Things are starting to happen. And that's why I feel like you could reach out to the notice of defaults. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to handle short sales per chance. You might. But why don't you see if you can find the people who are thinking that may be behind and the letter needs to say something about, you know, just get what equity you can out of your home now. Let me help you go find the next property that you're going to either buy or lease, you know, something to that effect. OK, so notice of default, you can reach out to those folks. Notice of default is really people have gotten a notice of default okay, right. um, against them because now they are uh, that's going to start happening more now. But there always are notice of defaults regardless of the pandemic. So you could you could be working on that as well. And 
I watch for an uptick of those is my point coming. Yeah. And, and, you know, on top of that, you know, even if you are not going to go after those sellers, you need to know about what's happening with that in your marketplace because your buyers are going to want to know about that. So you're, you know, that's a, that's a, a piece of real estate that you're going to need to start following and know, know about and get yourself um, become the expert on it or not the expert, but, you know, get some information on it. Now, I want to say that I went ahead and curated some content. And if you go over to our, what's our episode today? I didn't even 157. 157 over at WBNLpodcast.com, five ways to get listings. Now, um, we I've, I've outlined a little bit more detail on the steps for these and even included some scripts and some letters that you could use. Sweet. Okay, so go over there and get those and let us know if you have some other ideas of, of what to do. But don't, you don't need to try all of them. Pick one that's in your lane and focus on it. You know, invest a few dollars in some mailings. Uh, try some door knocking if, if you're comfortable with that. But you know what? Here's the easiest one, everyone. Just start and call your database already. I've mm. been talking about that for a year now. So maybe if you haven't, it's time. Even if you have a year ago, check back in. Things could have things and you haven't been doing a great job calling. Maybe you send a newsletter or something. But when's the last time you called everybody? and just check in and see, has anything changed? Another thing with your database is, and this is why it's important to track them, you know, stay in touch with people on social media, is pay attention to milestones and events that are happening in people's lives. Did they have a death? Have they had graduations? Uh, these are all indicators. Is somebody going through a hard time? These all may be indicators of maybe they need to move and you want to help them be that best advisor. So pay attention. That's the easiest one. Do number one, at least. All right, that's it, Matt Emerson. Good stuff. List to last. List to last, everybody. Always any market. That's right. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and uh, whatever reality meet. That's what it is. <laughs> That's episode 157. All of our show notes, as always, over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jenna Bryan, how did your uh, th our Thanksgiving, how did your St. Patrick's Day meal turn out? Oh my gosh, I was super happy with that. I loved it, and I don't know if I shared, but I made fresh soda bread. Oh bread. no, awesome! I made soda bread from scratch. We ate that and we have enough buttermilk left over that I have to make another one. So All right, please send me that recipe because we bought we went to Sprouts the other day and, and they had soda bread there. Um, so we bought some, but it just wasn't what we were looking for. I need to make some at home. So I need your recipe on that. It was super easy. Uh, yes. This was an easy one. And there's I have two, I'll send it to you. One was with actual buttermilk that you buy. And the other was if you just use milk with a little uh, cider vinegar so that it kind of Curve. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That, uh, that's awesome. It was kind of. A, I mean, considering it wasn't your typical go out and get, have a rowdy St. Patrick's Day, we had a we had a very festive St. Patrick's Day all all the way from our from our Facebook live in the morning all the way through my day it was a great day. Did you guys have a boiled dinner as well? Like we we did. You know what? I have been making this vegetable soup that is so good that there were no potatoes in it. So I threw some potatoes in and I threw some uh, sausage in, not Irish at all, but it was but it was stew-like. So we had a a, uh, a faux St. Patrick's meal, but it was just awesome. Didn't have any, any beer or anything like that though. So tonight is Taco Friday with IPA. It's Taco and IPA Friday. Well, there you go. That'll be just wonderful. Exactly. All right. Anyway, Thank that's all I got. I'll be over. Yeah, yeah. Hey, just as a reminder, everyone, if you haven't joined our Facebook group or if you'd like to, please head on, whoops, wrong one. Please head on over to Facebook and uh, type in uh, WBNL Wanderers Club, uh, ask to, uh, to join, and we'd be more than happy to join our group. Jan, we're gonna have to look at, you know, I'm, and actually we're not gonna look at Clubhouse because all we need is another thing for us to be doing. But we got talking about Clubhouse in a presentation we were doing yesterday. And I, I have, um, it just seems like, in the last week, I get so many more clubhouse invitations. It, you know, it's like you can tell that it start the well, the wave of that is really yeah. starting to crash. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like anything; it be, can become a distractor if you want it to. But I, one of the things that came up when we were doing this presentation, Cosmo, our partner Cosmo, was talking about how he listens because if you're not sure what clubhouse is, of course, it's this, it's the newest little, you know, whatever you want to call it, channel platform right. but it's all audio 
and it's all you can you, there's no video you join you have to get an invitation to join right now which is what some of these guys do to get it make it seem more exclusive that's and then it right just finally takes off and but it's it's attracted a lot of, in, of influencers and celebrities and so forth different rooms you can create your own room and there's networking going on and so some agents have, have jumped in to do that but Cosmo was talking about how he listens while he's you know like while he's working on other things kind of like you could if you were listening to a podcast yeah. wandering around so maybe it's a podcast where you can be interactive because you can ask to be uh to contribute or to but you're using audio not video and interesting i mean i i've only listened a little bit but because i feel like you can just get so distracted you, know, you can so it's just more of your day right i i have actually listened to a few national parks i uh, joined a bunch of national park not a bunch of park groups yeah and it's just interesting to hear people's take and what they're doing what they're planning and stuff like that so yeah it's you know it's another time suck but you know if you find the right group that you you know well if you found it so to matt's point you're you know passionate about the national parks and you start having conversations with people that's how you can segue it into what you do for a living yeah. and that you end up helping people who also love national parks that need to buy or sell a house in your area so that's right guys limit that's networking ideas as well right of finding around your niche we're gonna have to add clubhouse to yeah we never you know, marketing you know, series you know seriously we do because it became very clear yesterday during that presentation that it people are aware of it right oh yeah it took over the conversation right oh yeah, I, need it did. I need an invite yeah like, you know, a year ago would have been TikTok, right? So now, but no one was talking about TikTok yesterday. Yes, You know, yesterday it was all yeah. on Clubhouse. It's really interesting how, you know, the, the latest, greatest thing comes over. And in however many months, there'll be something else that comes yeah. onto the scene. Yeah. And then, you know, and some of them last and some of them don't. As we were talking, like, remember Periscope? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, all good, everybody. There That's is something new happening all the time, but I can tell you one thing that never changes, or not never changes, but one thing that's always evolving, but always here and present for you is WBNL Coaching. So if you want to get more information about our training programs, all the courses that we have available, go over to WBNLCoaching.com. We also, in our Facebook group, by the way, do have weekly training. Jan does a coach and motivational tip every Monday. Cosmo does incredible tech tips on Tuesday. And then I round out our little triad with Canva corner, uh, Canva tips on Wednesday. So there's always something going on in the coaching world at WBNL Coaching. Also, Jana Brian, you want to talk just a second because I just feel like talking today uh, uh -huh. uh, about we have a new course coming out. Uh, we're in the process of yeah, so right mention. now, real estate sales builder. So give us a give them a little tease on that. Yeah, very excited about this. This is a course that we've been wanting to, to go back and do as a foundational core real estate training program, 12 modules. So we take everybody through. And, and what I love about it is I'm glad we didn't do it five years ago because so many things have changed in the business. For sure. So it's going to have the latest content, a nice blend of the tried and true that always works coupled with the right technology and the right tactics in social media and online with core, you know, best practices and habits. And we take you through what are the, if you were a new agent, it's going to be great for you. But even if you are a seasoned pro and you never really took the time to run your business like a real business, this is the foundation course for that. So we take you through tools that you need, best practices, all the way through everything in your database, working with buyers, sellers, open houses. We have a whole module on just online presence and how do you get more reviews to online lead generation, its own little separate introduction to things you can do to generate your own leads online, all the way to the best business practices, right? So it is the foundation for anybody new to seasoned veterans alike. And, and you know, you, we, you know that we always, we have always had Team Builder, which is interesting because we, we found a need years ago to have a Team Builder program, but through the years, we found that uh, many people are building a team, but they never really laid these foundational things and, and, and put them in place. So that's what that's right. the need for. So you almost need both. You can't really jump into team building until you're really clear about the way you run your business. So we're jazzed about that. I think, I don't know when we're going to be able to launch that. Uh, maybe within the next 30 days, that'll be. No, nah, I think you, probably sometime Q2, maybe beginning of Q3 probably is when we can have everything up there. But well, just we're, we're practice, well, we're basically about to come into Q2. So I bet we'll have it out in Q2 because yeah. now we're almost to the end of quarter one. Yeah, so now. we'll keep you posted on that. It's going to be a great course. So we're, we're very excited about it. We haven't updated our, our uh, uh, 
CYRB course for quite a few years now. So yep, it's, it's be better, it's expanded, it's a lot more uh, valid content. It, it's going to be very affordable. And of course, if you are a listener, you'll be able to get in on our discounts for our pre-launch and our launching price. Uh, so you'll have to to miss that. That's right. All right, everybody. Live the life you dreamed. Get up, get out, and continue to mask up because it's too early to take those masks off. I'm just telling you. And be forever wandering, but not lost.